Maternal mortality is a major contributor to high number of deaths occurring among women in Nigeria. Maternal mortality is defined as the death of a woman while pregnant, during delivery, or within 42 days, that is six weeks, of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and the site of pregnancy. Conservative estimates show that eight of women die out of every 10,000 live births in this country, an unacceptable rate in a nation so richly endowed with human and material resources needed to combat these menace. A woman delivered uh, in FSP, catch her and catch the baby until we uh, contribute 2029 20, to go and bring her uh, out for the hospital. This is a call to action, a call for more concerted efforts at all levels to ensure life and well-being for mothers while they bring forth the next generation. But first, let's gain a better understanding of this problem. Maternal mortality has seven major causes. These are hemorrhage, infections, pregnancy-induced, hypertension, unsafe abortion, malaria, obstructed labor, and anemia. Causes of this maternal mortality is very known to all of us, and the things that we can do, either at government level or community level, that we prevent it are also very simple. They are not things that require high technology. So then what is it that we are not doing right or that we are doing that is making us to fail in our effort to put an end to this? And in, within the country, some of the things that we have observed that can help us to put our fingers on what can be done better is to note that the figures vary from place to place from region to region, ranging from as low as 200 in the southwest to about 3,500 in the northeast and also in the northwest. So what are the things that are happening? First, one of the things is that the earth system itself, policy issues. Although some harmful cultural and religious practices have contributed a good deal to the continued suffering of childbearing women, one factor that is readily culpable has been the non-availability of proper pre- and post-natal care. In Nigeria, where the greater part of the population lives in rural areas, the problem is compounded in some cases by the refusal of rural women to access appropriate health care, preferring to patronize the cultural methods of delivery. These cultural methods are, however, not equipped to handle any of the many complications that could occur during childbirth. This situation is made worse by the improper location and siting of public hospitals and clinics, poor road networks and a lack of vehicle mobility. Women need to have information and have access to services, quality services. Most women don't even deliver in health, uh, health centers. They are ill-equipped. And uh, the traditional people who are providing them information, they are not well trained. Nigerian women are dying like chickens. The statistics show us that 54,000 women die every day. That comes down to one woman every 10 minutes. Nigeria is a rich country. We are blessed with resources. Why should women have to die because they do not have access to health services? It is annoying. It is painful. There are quite a number of measures that can be put in place. Uh, first of all, UNFPA works with a three-pronged strategy to reduce maternal mortality. In the first instance, we work to ensure that every woman has access to contraception on a voluntary basis. This is important because we know that some maternal deaths occur because women do not space their pregnancies or have pregnancies that are either too early or too late. Number two, we work in the area of safe motherhood to ensure that every birth is provided with a skilled attendant. This indeed is the most critical factor in maternal mortality reduction because skilled attendance ensures that when complications arise, uh, the attendants are able to refer and provide the needed care for the woman. Number three, and which is probably the most important work that we do, is in ensuring that emergency obstetric care services is provided for the woman when complications arise. Evidence shows that at least 15% of women 
will develop a complication during pregnancy or childbirth. When these complications occur, unfortunately, most of them can neither be predicted, neither can they be prevented. But on a happy note, they can be treated. We ensure that we provide services to provide good quality care to these women when these complications occur. Poverty and lack of financial empowerment for women also plays a major role with the families using available resources to cater for the pressing needs germane to the survival of their other offspring. And just like the president gathered a, a group of stakeholders together to discuss the Sosoliso crash the other day, we want the president to know that Nigerian women are dying in their thousands every year, 54,000 is a huge number. That comes to about 461 Sosoliso plane crashes every year. That is how annoying it has become. We want the president to step into the matter. For one thing, Nigerian women are demanding for free antenatal services. Why should we pay our government for replenishing the workforce? Vesicle vagina fistula, or VVF, is a condition that can arise from a poorly managed childbirth, in which case it is referred to as obstetric fistula. A survey conducted in Nigeria in the early 90s found 94% of the VVF patients to be women who gave birth at home with about half of them under the age of 20. Vesicle vagina fistula is a situation in which a woman as a damage during childbirth such that there is connection between the uh, 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 urinary system that is where the urine collects and the uh, vagina so she leaks urine or sometimes even feces all the time this is common in nigeria and globally about more than half of cases of fistula residing in the world uh, domiciled in nigeria alone proper health care Access to family planning and birth control could have helped these women who, though lucky to be alive, may never be able to give birth again. Despite the fact that efforts are on on a global scale to combat HIV and AIDS continues to rear its head in unexpected place and maternal mortality is no exception. HIV and AIDS contributes an alarming percentage of women who die during childbirth. The question at this point will be, what can be done to stem this unnecessary waste of the lives of women at childbirth? Huge as the challenge may seem, the good news is that it can be tackled and brought under control if appropriate action is taken and adequate measures put in place. I personally worked in the UK for almost nine years. We buried only one woman out of 18,000 births and that was not because of the pregnancy, it was because she had a heart condition. Ask me, can Nigeria ever get to that? My, my answer to you would be, we can beat that. How? It's a matter of mindset and allocation of both human and material resources. We can start by providing more education to women on the issue of maternal mortality, increasing their awareness on the risk of childbirth and modern ways to combat it. The health facilities must improve their services and update the knowledge and skills of their staff to cope with complications. It is important that we inform the public, we inform the government, we inform the policy makers, we inform our traditional leaders and religious leaders who have all this uh, negative attitude towards safe motherhood. When we talk about maternal mortality, some of the issues we look at are the delays. You know, we talk about the three delays. Delay in taking a decision to seek care, delay in getting to care and delay in receiving care when you get there. So it, you know, we need to get to the point where we educate our women and their husbands, their mother-in-laws, their consigned others to make sure that a woman that is pregnant goes for antenatal care at least in the first trimester, the first three months of pregnancy, she needs to go seek care. And then we need to make sure that we have public health facilities that offer those cares within accessible distance, not one in a local government that you know, is so miles away from the woman that she might not afford the cost of going there. Because if it's too far away, she might something might happen before she gets there. And then those facilities must offer obstetric care. 
you must have trained birth attendants in those places to give her the care she needs. So we need to at least tackle those three basic levels, make sure that the people are aware and informed to go seek for care within the first three months, that the facility is within where they can get to at an affordable cost, and that when they get to those facilities, they are trained birth attendants to give them the care that they need. Well, right now, with the parity in Nigeria is still high. No, I think it's, it's about six point something percent right now and it's still very high. And that's because of the high infant mortality rate. And so the woman feels she needs to have to replace the one she has lost. And too frequent and too soon is also another challenge in maternal uh, morbidity. Because when the woman has too frequent pregnancies, her body has not rested and too close you know, it endangers her. And um, with most of them not seeking maternal um, antenatal help on time, that also uh, increases the risk that she's at. So in Nigeria, we need to promote voluntary family um, planning. The interconnected campaigns against malaria and HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis should be stepped up, especially for pregnant women. These would provide early detection and proper management of any health condition that may trigger complications during childbirth. Society must wake up in its general attitude towards pregnant women, since an easy, restful pregnancy will almost always guarantee safe delivery. Government and community members must rise up to the challenge by, one, responding to needs of women, that is providing quality emergence of surgery care services, promoting the uh, health-taking behavior of these women. One of the things that can, can be done, like I said, is to make it free, to make services free. And for cultural sensitivities within the country to be modified such that it gives opportunity and empowerment for women to seek help when they do require it. I think one message that we should get is most of the cases of fistula occur in women who themselves are children, many of them below the age of 17, sometimes below, some are 10 years old. So these are children who have not reached full maturity before they go into childbearing. And this is one area that we can help by encouraging our children to go for development programs, education, formal and informal, so that they grow up to maturity before they start childbearing. Perhaps this is something that our community members, our cultural gatekeepers will look at. And also to ensure that when such young people do are in, uh, have pregnancy and are in labor, they are given the right and the privilege to access services on time appropriately, and that the health system, the health facilities respond appropriately by overcoming delays that make them to go through labor for several hours before they deliver, ending up in vesicovaginal fistula. Obnoxious cultural practices and superstitions should be eradicated through sensitization and more robust awareness campaigns. Governments at all levels and non-governmental organizations should not rely on the ongoing efforts to provide safe motherhood for women in Nigeria. Anybody and everybody who can help move this process forward should do what they can and not hold back. We should ensure that emergency obstetric care services is made available to all women that provide that develop complications during childbirth. Number two, that every birth should be attended by skilled attendant. Number three, that appropriate equipment and supplies, life-saving supplies, especially magnesium sulfate for treatment of, him, of, of uh, eclampsia, uh, life-saving su uh, supply for the treatment of uh, hemorrhages, and care, skilled care, improvement, improving the capacity of our, of our workers so that they can provide quality services should be ensured in all our facilities. The causes of the mortality, both maternal and child, are mostly causes due to preventable, communicable diseases or in terms of maternal health, there are things that could be prevented through an effective primary health care. 
duty is in the interest of the next generation, in the interest of the hundreds of thousands of women who would experience illness and complications relating to pregnancy and childbirth every year in Nigeria, in the interest of the over 53,000 women who will die this year alone if we do nothing.